Hey everybody, I just wanted to uh, create a little video to start showing you different types of interactions that we can be creating in Adobe InDesign for our EPUBs. So today I want to start out with animation. Let's get started. Okay, so I'm opening up InDesign. I'm going to create an interactive document and I have some presets that were recently used. The one that I'm probably going to want to use is an iPad. So when I press create, it should bring up an interactive document with that size. You can see this workspace is set to Essentials, but I'm going to go to Digital Publishing, which is going to give me most of the tools that I need over here. So I just want to show some of the different interactive tools I have here. So this one here is for animations, which is what we're going to do today. That's for setting timings, for putting in media. Here's our buttons and forms. This is for liquid layouts. Liquid layouts along with alternative layouts is the way you're going to create so that you can have your files present both vertically and horizontally. Here's your hyperlinks. If we want to customize this, I would go to Windows and come down to interactive and then I can see what I'm missing here. One of the things I don't see in there is the EPUB interactivity preview. So if I click that, that'll open up here and I can drag that into here. And now I have it here ready to use. All right, so now that I'm ready to get going, I'm gonna just show you how to make something simple. You may remember from my own example that I'm creating, I had two multi-point stars. One was colorful, one was black and they're rotating in opposite directions over each other. I want to show you how to do something similar to that. So let's get started. First thing I want to do is I just want to put a background color here. So I'm going to take the rectangle tool and just add a rectangle in the background that fits the shape of my screen. And I'm going to add a color. I'm going to try one of the greens and see how that looks and I can always change that if I don't like it. So I'm going to close that window and I'm going to go object lock, or, and I want to lock that background so I'm not accidentally clicking in it. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I have these flowers I created in Adobe Illustrator, and I want to bring those flowers into our design. I'm going to go Command D to place, and then I'm going to navigate to my clipboard, and inside my clipboard I have the blue flower, so I'm going to open that one, and let's place it over here. And now I want to place the pink flower, so I'm going to click off that. And I'm going to go Command-D again. That would be Control-D if you're on a PC. And I'm going to choose the pink flower. Open that, and I'm going to drag that in. Maybe make it a little smaller. So now I have the bigger blue flower and the smaller pink flower. And what I want to do with that is I want to put some animations on those. So this video is going to show us how to do that and a couple of different options for our animations. Okay, I didn't love the uh, background. I changed it to a lighter pink background, which is going to conflict with this flower, but I want to put this flower and line it up with this flower so it may not be an issue. I want to select both flowers, and then I want to align center both vertically and horizontally. Distribute. There we go. Um, so I have the one flower on top of the other, but I'm not loving that. So let's offset it this time and we'll have them kind of overlap. All right, so I'm going to have some overlap here where we're going to see both flowers a little better and we're going to actually see the animations. All right, so now how do I animate these? So I want to work one at a time. Let's start with this foreground image and I'm going to come to my animation panel, which is over here. So as you can see, there's no animation on this right now. Okay, so having selected the one, I'm going to come back here and it says Pink Flower AI is the name. And then the preset I can choose with the drop down menu. So let's say on the first part of the animation, I want it to bounce. So I'm going to go to bounce and select bounce right. And this is going to show what that bounce is going to look like. So I can come down to the interactive preview and reload it. And I should be able to see what that bounce is going to look like. So it's going to start again and it's going to bounce like that. I'm not saying that I want it to stay that way, but this shows the path that it's bouncing. For now, I'm just going to leave that, and I'm going to now animate the second flower. So I click on the blue flower alone. Make sure I only have the blue one selected. And I'm going to come back here to here, and it says blue flower AI. And I'm going to choose the animation, and for this time, I'm going to rotate it. So it's going to rotate 180 degrees clockwise, and I can loop that if I want to. And I'm going to go from on page load, and then I have this whole properties section that I could open up. 
So I'm going to, instead of rotate it 180, I'm going to physically change that to 360 so it goes all the way around. And for now, I'm just going to leave that as my setting. And let's come back here and take a look and see what that looks like now if we, when we hit reset. So right now that's going to move. And then that's going to turn around 360. So it's got a little bit of a slow in and slow out to it. And I can adjust the speed of it. I can adjust the way it's rotating. I'm going to come back to here. And it says the duration is one second. Let's bring that up, make it take longer so that it rotates slower. Let's do four seconds and let's preview it and see what that looks like. So now it's turning much slower. Let's look at the adjustments and see what else we can do with it. So it's got a preset of ease in and ease out. If we put none here, that should then turn at a more constant rotational speed. And just making sure on page load, though we don't need a trigger of any sort. Let's take a look at that now. And I'm gonna click here and see if we get a better rotation. You can see they're happening one after the other. I'm going to want to do a couple of things. I want them to happen at the same time. And also this one, I kind of want it to land here and then start rotating back where we started. I want it to land over here instead of starting there. So I want to click on here again, this interaction. So now if I go to here, let's take a look at the, the presets that we have here. We can go play one time on that and we can go to current appearance so that it ends up there or to current location. So now I'm going to come back to my interaction viewer, the preview, and I'm going to click here. And you'll see now it's going to just bounce right up there and stop. Then this one's going to turn. Okay, so now what if I wanted this one to do a second animation? There's no way to add another animation on this one without doing something different. I could change the animation, but if I change the animation, it's the bounce we lose, right? So if I want to keep that bounce and I want to add another animation, like to rotate, for example, I need to do something additionally. So one of the hacks that I saw online that I really like is we can take one of these empty frames and we can draw a frame over here. And just leaving it empty, I'm going to now hit Shift and select that so that they're both selected at the time, at the same time. And I'm going to go Command-G and group them. So now I have these two objects grouped. So see how the name changed to group here? So I'm gonna say pink flower group, all right? So now on that one, I can actually change the animation. But I wanna put this on rotate. And again, it doesn't much matter. I'm going to change it here to 360. Then I want it to continue looping. Now I'm going to go back here and Let's see what it looks like. So if I press this, it should no longer bounce. It should just turn. Now this one is going much faster than the other one. If I like that, I could leave it. Or I could come here and I can adjust the timing and speed. So clicking on this object here, we're back to pink flower. I'm going to go to the same speed that I did before, which is four seconds. And I took off the ease in and ease out and I have it looping. So let's just show what that looks like and I'm gonna go like that. So now I have the two flowers turning once the second one gets started. So now I have the two turning at the same time and they're turning in the same direction. Let's make the pink one turn in the opposite direction by making that negative 360. Let's take a look and see if we, how that changed. Okay, so now I have that one turning in the in the counterclockwise direction while the other one turns clockwise. And that's an interesting interaction. Now let's go back to what I was doing before. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to select that and then shift select the flower. So now I've made that group. I'm going to click animation. And let's just move this one in. So I'm going to choose an, an interaction. Let's do grow. Let's see what that looks like. 
So the grow just slightly grows and gets larger. So now I have two interactions on that. How fast do I want it to grow? Let's do two. And should it continually loop and grow? I don't think so. We can play that part one time. And I don't need any rotation on that. So on that one, let's take a look and see what happens now. So when I click this, so that's going to start turning. Then the second one is going to start turning four seconds later. And now that one's going to grow. So the scale is 200% width and height. So let's change that to 120%. I think that'll work better now. Let's take a look and let's try that again. So now that's going to rotate, and then that's going to rotate, and then four seconds later, we're going to get a little bit of growth on that. That one's not so obvious, and it's harder to see. Okay, so I want to show you in here on the timing panel. So it says on page load, and it shows my three different animations in here. I can adjust what goes first, so I'm going to put the group one first. Um, so that's going to change the order. It says on page load. Let's take a look and see what that one looks like. So let's press play. So I changed the order, so now it's going to grow first. Then the blue is going to start turning, and then four seconds later, we have the pink one turning. So that looks much better. I want to adjust the spacing a little bit more. I'm going to go back to this group that I have, and actually I want to get this down here more. So there's a little bit less of an overlap. Once it grows, it's going to be a little bit better of an overlap. Let's see if that makes a difference now. I'm going to press the preview. Let's see what happens. So now it overgrows, and now they're slightly overlapping. Now I have the two going in opposite directions. And then let's play this again. So now it's moving, it's growing, and now it's overlapped a little bit, and the bottom one starts turning, and then the top one starts turning. And one more thing I want to show you in the timing panel. So if I open the timing panel, and let's click off there, um, notice that these here are, are locked out, but if I select all these together, and I wanted it to do all those things at the same time, I can lock them together here. So I either have play separately or play together. Um, you see how now I have these all linked? So now when I play the interaction and reset it, what should happen is it should do all of those three things at once. That's what we have now. All three things are happening at once, so I don't have that four second delay anymore. We can add another empty frame to that. So let's put an empty frame over here and then shift click. So now they're together. And now when I go to the animation, I'm going to say this is the blue flower group. Let's bring that in from the top, fly in from the top. And we want it to go to the current location and on page load that's a pretty quick drop one second let's do one and a half seconds uh, now we can come back here we have the blue flower group let's move that to the top and notice how by dragging it up there it got put in with the other ones so now when we play the preview we should see another animation on the blue where the blue is going to drop in and there we go Go to Object, Arrange, bring to the front. That's going to play in the right order now, where the pink is on top of the blue and it did. All right, so now I have two objects, each having different interactions. One is growing, one is dropping in from the top, and both are rotating, one clockwise, one counterclockwise. Those are some of the tools we have for making interactions. Have some fun with it. You can add another group and add a third interaction to an object. You can create objects right in InDesign the way I did in my magazine cover, or you can create them in Adobe Illustrator and really have some fun and make some nice things that are going to be eye-catching, right? These are kind of simple flower designs that I made in Illustrator. And so that's a little preview as to how you can create some objects with multiple interactions on them.